podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No brakes, no brakes, no fear, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Tricky conditions, possibly the watchword for the past week in British Speedway. Unfortunately, we can't have a chat with the rain itself, but we can have a chat with some of those that did get involved in some action across British Speedway. First of all, at the National Speedway Stadium, where the Bellevue Aces had a big win against the Leicester Lions. Not much we can do with the weather, really. The, it's a shame the conditions were heavy in the first round and they'd done a bit of track work and the track actually come really good and then... Uh, here come the rain, but uh, not much we can do about that. But really solid win from the boys, full team performance. It's uh, Yeah, we've got to be happy with that. Something for the Kingsland Stars fans this week. We speak to Niels Christian Everson, another rider frustrated by the weather. I haven't done a meeting since we went to Leicester. It's almost three weeks ago and... Uh... And uh, yeah, yeah, that is frustrating. So, um, so I still haven't managed to to race in Gdansk yet uh, in Poland either. Glasgow Tigers have beaten Berwick Bandits the last 13 times they've met until last weekend, when Stuart Dixon's Bandits finally got one over the Tigers. The important line was was really to win the meeting, and that would that would knock the hoodoo at the same time. We've done that for me, Berwick. Well, they deserve their win. More reaction from Stuart Dixon to come, and we hear from a Glasgow Tiger in Steve Worrell, who is the latest rider to be quizzed by Mike Boswell. I guess if, if I was just cruising down the road and wanted something easy to, I, I like country music because I don't know, it's not head banging. It's you know, it's just nice and easy to listen to. And... All this and much more to come on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along. It has been a rain-affected week in British Speedway, but we have had some action, only a little bit, and hopefully much more to come in the week ahead. But the Bellevue Aces were in action on Monday night, and they raced to their first league points of the season with a 51-33 victory over Leicester in the Rowe Motor Oil Premiership. The meeting was curtailed one race early as persistent rain moved in from the halfway stage, but the outcome was well beyond doubt by that point. Aces captain Brady Kurt scored a four-ride paid maximum with 11 plus one, and both he and Dan Bewley recorded fast times in the opening heats with conditions being fairly grippy. Bewley won his first three rides before missing out in heat 13, whilst Norwich Bladorn contributed 9 plus 1. The Lions had just three race wins, whilst Ryan Douglas picked up four second places to top score with eight points. Well, we'll hear from Stuart Dixon, the team manager of the Leicester Lions, in a couple of moments. First of all, let's hear from captain with his paid max, Brady Kurtz. Yeah, it's not so bad, I guess. Uh, not much we can do with the weather, really. The, it's a shame the conditions were heavy in the first round and they'd done a bit of track work and the track actually come really good and then uh, here come the rain, but uh, not much we can do about that. But really solid win from the boys, full team performance. It's, uh, yeah, we've got to be happy with that. You maybe found life a bit tough against Sheffield in that first meeting here, but you really answered those critics tonight, both yourself and Dan, with really fast times and great results. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we lost any talent in one meeting. I think we both just had a bad day. It just happened to be on the same day, and uh, luckily we've got a solid team that can help us out when we do, but uh, we were both back in action today, and... Uh, Hopefully it can continue. I think that was the thing that you really noticed looking at the scores. You, whilst you got a paid maximum, of, of course, and, and, and Dan was on a max until the last heat when in really terrible conditions, that the scoring was fairly evenly spread. There was nobody really cut adrift and, and nobody really flying away. It was a, a good, solid throw. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where we've got the advantage this year. I think we do have a full team and uh, all of us are going to need to chip in to go all the way. And uh, so far it's looking good. And overall, your season, you've had a fantastic start this season. I was commentating with Rory Schlein and he was saying, you know, you're having a fantastic time on the continent and, you know, I potentially on, on bigger things and you've made no secret about your desire to be in the Grand Prix at some point and uh, a form like this must give you a huge confidence to, to nail that. Yeah, obviously, other than last week here, the whole, everything's been going pretty well. The practice and stuff in Poland's been super good and obviously it's only practice you know it all it comes down to the real meetings but uh yeah everything's been going good and I've just been chipping away making sure everything's in order and uh yeah hopefully I can continue on well the fact that we can actually see some of you Kevlar shows you've had a good night <laughs> yeah no, that's always a good thing <laughs> thanks a lot Brady see you later
Well, I also spoke to Sam Masters after that uh, match at the National Speedway Stadium. He had a bit more of a clean-up operation on his hands, it's fair to say. But the evening started off good for him and the Leicester Lions. It was the second half after the rain began to fall where things really began to fall apart. Here is Sam Masters of the Leicester Lions. Yeah, I uh, started well personally and, and the team did. We were pushing them. Um, and if the track stayed nice, I think it would have been a really good meeting. But obviously the rain's ruined it again. Um, I didn't really know what was happening after about heat eight because I was out in every race, I felt, and uh, my bike kept cutting out from the weather and then I never had time to, to fix the problem. So, anyway, it is what it is. We got the meeting done, unfortunately, and it was ended ruined by the, the weather, but uh, one less time we've got to come back here. It's quite a mountain to climb for the for the aggregate bonus point, but you're still going to have home advantage when you do face uh, Bellevue, and, and it's not insurmountable either. Yeah, you know, like they've done what they've done to us tonight. What was the score? I don't even really know what the score was, but um, I'm sure we can do the same to them. They've done it to us, so uh, we need to, we need to just get on a roll. It's, the season's really getting on put on hold here with the weather, and uh, it's no one's fault. But um, you know, we all tried today. Uh, we don't want to be racing too many meetings like this, but um, we'll battle on. And the weather's been a problem everywhere, hasn't it? You, you, Poland's suffering from it too. Yeah, yeah, I've had I think I've had seven rain offs now, and uh, it's early April. So yeah, it's a it's crazy, man. It's bucketing down now, and uh, hopefully it clears up soon because we want to just get on our bikes and get on a bit of a roll and start the season properly. Okay, well done tonight, Sam. Good luck with the cleanup operation. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Let's hear it from Sam Masters' boss then, Stuart Dixon, who spoke to Ryan Guest. Well, Stuart, obviously that was a, a tough one in, in the end for the Lions. It was tough. Um, well, you adapted to the conditions better than us, I think. Certainly mid-meeting after the, the first four races, the track was, was racing well with a lengthy track grade. You know, for, for whatever reason, I'm not too sure. Um, two, six, seven-minute track grades. Yeah, all of a sudden there was a rush on. Sam Masters, I put him in there. As a, a tactic on the, he's out in the next race and the two minutes were on straight away and I thought, so, you know, I thought we wasted a bit of time but at the end of the day, that could be making excuses. It doesn't get away from the result. We were well beaten on the night uh, but I can't look too much into it with, with the way the conditions were. Matt Lemon hit the nail on the head. We wanted one in three if we won the toss because we knew they were going to be good to start with and then the gates would level themselves out. That's exactly what happened as Mark said in the interview earlier on. Like you say, it's hard to read too much into it because uh, seven or eight races gone, there was only six points or so in it and, and you, were, you were well in the contest whilst you weren't necessarily picking up the, the race wins at that point. Yep, definitely, I would agree. We were in for it for a little period, but as I said, just at that mid-meeting point, I thought Bellevue, you know, I'm not saying rolled their sleeves up, you know, it's like in a football term, but they, they adapted better the conditions than we did. We, we lost a couple of heat advantages and a couple of silly points on the track which you lose your momentum, the heads go down. It's, it's difficult to keep the heads up when the guys are soaking wet, covered in mud. It's no fun out there. Um, and, you know, it didn't matter if we were on one and three or two and four, they, they seem to be making the gate on us, which was very, very important tonight. But they were good. We've got, got to take our hat off. They were good. And we, we kind of fell away a wee bit, unfortunately. Got to look forward now. Uh, Thursday night at the, the Pidcock Motorcycles Arena. It's uh, um, as big as they come, I guess, the, the, the reigning champion Sheffield. Uh, your thoughts ahead of that one? Yeah, it's obviously it's intriguing. You've got the old owners, the Bates family, you know, bringing, bringing Sheffield back to Leicester. Uh, they've probably, it's the first time, you know, since they, 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 they've not owned Leicester. Forecast looks decent so far for Thursday, touch wood. Um, we'll be well up for that, you know. We'll, we'll be ready. Hopefully, we'll be better conditions, you know weather-wise and hopefully we can we can respond and uh, there's now been questions asked of this Leicester team and of me we need to respond on Thursday night and show we're up for the challenge we will be and you mentioned those questions that may be being started starting to ask uh, as team manager still early doors but any any major concerns no no at the moment to be honest no but um you obviously you know we'll, we'll f- we've lost at home already in the cup thankfully you know no offense it wasn't a league match but Tonight, disappointing to lose with. Was it 18 points, I think, we lost with? That's disappointing. But, as I say, I don't want to take too much into it because of conditions. But we we need, to, we need to roll our sleeves up on Thursday. We need to, Sheffield's going to come looking because when a team's, you know, at an indifferent start, we'll say, they'll be looking to grab points. That's what I'd be doing if I was going there and their forum was a wee bit erratic like ours. So, but... Uh, 
I expect to see a response from my riders on Thursday night. They'll get a response from me in the team talk. And uh, fingers crossed, all guns blazing. It should be a cracker. Yeah, fingers crossed. Weather permitting, terms and conditions apply, all that kind of stuff. Rome Motor Oil Premiership fixtures for Thursday, then April 11th. Leicester Lions versus Sheffield Tigers. Also got Oxford Spires uh, hosting Ipswich Witches at Oxford Stadium. And at the Adrian Flux Arena, will they finally get their first home meeting on the board? Kingsland Stars versus Bellevue Aces, all of those starting at 7.30. And then looking ahead to Monday, the return leg of that fixture, Bellevue hosting Kingsland at the National Speedway Stadium next Monday, April 15th. And the other Monday fixture is Birmingham Brummies versus the Leicester Lions. And will we see Piotr Pavlicki ride for the first time in Birmingham colours? That is certainly the aim. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, giving you reaction to that on next week's episode of No Breaks, No Fear. Coming up in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, then we turn our attention to the Kingsland Stars and we have a chat with Niels Christian Everson who, uh, well, there's not a great deal to talk about at Kingsland, really, because they've only had the one fixture due to the weather so far. But that is perhaps a topic in itself, and we'll talk to Niels Christian Everson next on No Breaks, No Fear. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. A couple of pieces of sad news to bring you. Ipswich legend John Tiger Louis sadly passed away at the age of 82 in the past week. Uh, born in the town, John joined the club in 1970, spending the majority of his career with the Witches and led the team to league and cup titles in the 70s. He became British champion in 1975, and on the world stage, he finished third at Wembley Stadium in the same season in one of his four world championship finals. Nicknamed Tiger because of his iconic leathers, John also represented England in the World Team Cup, winning gold three times. After his racing career, he became promoter at Foxhall before retiring from the role in 2019, along with son Chris, who continues to run affairs at tips which John was recently inducted into British Speedway's Hall of Fame and our thoughts and the thoughts of everyone across British Speedway are with the Louis family at this sad time Sean Tacey is one of the many riders who rode for John during his career I think he'll be remembered for the admiration in the sense that um, you know it's no it's no secret that they did go through a big financial crisis at one point and it was you know um, to, to save the Speedway and no matter what he wasn't going to give up um, you know, then, and that's just so sad at this moment in time for this to have happened now. Well, it is at any time, but they've built an absolute fantastic team again this year. And, you know, the boys are all riding really well. And um, just a shame he, you know, not, not going to see the season to develop how I think it will develop. Sean Tacey speaking there. Also further sad news, Kelvin Tatum has revealed the death of his father, Martin Spud Tatum, who passed away peacefully last Tuesday at the grand old age of 97. Kelvin says he was a true pioneer in the racing world. He set him and his brother Neville on their paths to their lives in the saddle. And Kelvin says, RIP, Dad. Our thoughts go to, of course, Kelvin Tatum and his family and that of Chris Louie and the Louie family and everyone involved with Ipswich Speedway. No brakes, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Our special guest this week, well, he's a four-time world champion with uh, Denmark and he's back with the Kingsland Stars in 2024. Niels Christian Everson joins us. And uh, Niels, let's just start by talking about the season so far and the fact that actually, you know, we're heading into mid-April and you've not actually had many meetings at all, no. let alone in, in Britain. You've had uh, the one meeting against Leicester. Have you ever known a start to a season like it where you're jetting in and out of different countries just to get another rain off? I think the the last couple of years has been uh, has been quite wet um, to start the season, but I don't know. I mean, this year seems to be a bit extreme. Uh, I was uh, I, yeah, I left home last uh, 
last Monday and uh, I was home again yesterday uh, and I didn't really manage to do anything. So it was just traveling around, uh, staying in different places and uh, and get and get rained off everywhere. So yeah, it's 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 frustrating and um, yeah, it would be nice with some some good weather now and some better conditions. Because in, in Poland, you're riding with Gdansk, aren't you? And I've seen Tom Brennan having, obviously, similar journeys to you. He's jetting out of the UK, gets to D- G- Gdansk to find that, maybe even get to the track, and it's not it's not rideable. And uh, it, riders just want to be on the bike, because when you're on the bike, you're earning money, of course, as well. So there is that. Of course, it's, it's everything. You know, we, we sort of try our best to prepare for the season as good as possible and um you know you want to spend a bit of time on on the tracks uh, trying engines t- testing different setups and and just uh yeah just just get the the preparations uh running but um so far it hasn't really been possible uh, i haven't done a meeting since we went to leicester it's almost three weeks ago and uh and uh, yeah that is frustrating so um so i still haven't managed to to race in Gdansk yet uh, in poland either um not even a practice session so um so season season starts there this week so uh, so it's not uh, it's not really ideal yeah and and you've got hopefully some action with kings lynn this week finally looking to get that first home meeting on and uh, it'll be up against bellevue aces i know that you watch bellevue in action on monday night when they raced against leicester um and they they looked like a solid outfit, and and I guess for for you for you boys for for Kingsling, you're not sure how you're going to go on your home track yet because you haven't as we just mentioned you haven't actually had a home meeting. No, we haven't had a home meeting yet, and uh, which is also um, obviously Bellevue had quite a few meetings uh, done already, and um, you know they are a good team. They are, looks to be uh, a very solid one to seven again, and um, and yeah, we we definitely need to. Uh, Need to need to be ready for them when when they come on Thursday. So, but it would be good to to start the season uh, at home and um, and yeah, just uh, hopefully we can uh, we can all hit a good performance and um, we will all be happy. Looking at the Kingsland side, um, obviously there's a, a lot of familiarity to to Peterborough Panthers fans about it because there's a number of you moved over. Unfortunate situation. Maybe a word on on the Peterborough situation as well. A, a club that you were at last year that is now no longer there. It must be very sad too to see. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of the showground now with everything removed and sort of being slowly dismantled. It's a it's a it's a sad sight. But I guess though, for Peterborough fans, if they are willing to to make the journey over to Kings Lynn, there is some a bit like I suppose with with Leicester or or with Birmingham, some familiarity with with riders for those teams that are no longer uh, unfortunately with us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's uh, obviously frustrating with a, with any any tracks which is uh, not racing um, anymore and, and which is closing down because you know the more teams, the more clubs, and the more tracks, the better. Uh, you know, it's obviously uh, it's obviously a disaster when 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 the tracks uh, are closing down. So so. Um, yeah, what can we say? It's uh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty sad, but um, but yeah, this year Kings Lynn and um, we have quite a few boys from the Peterborough team. Uh, so yeah, it would be good to see some of the some of the Panthers supporters uh, maybe make their way up to Kings Lynn or, or or to Leicester or wherever to um, to see some of the riders and um, maybe support a new team or or at least support the sport i think that's that's sort of more important than than to have a team uh, which you which you support is i think the the sports needs it uh, no matter what team you are you're cheering for I guess you could even go along and support the opposition. You know, if you if you can't bring yourself as a Peterborough fan to support Kings Lynn, you could uh, you could support whoever's visiting that week. You could do that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but like I said, I think it's more important just to to get uh, get behind the sport and uh, and 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 get some people into the stadiums and hopefully uh, hopefully things can start to grow a bit again and uh, and we can get uh, get more teams back. As we mentioned, you've only had the one fixture, so there's not a great deal to go on. It was an away visit to to Leicester, um, and um, a, a good, you know, sort of solid all round performance. You only missed out by by a few points, really. Um, so a close one, and Leicester notoriously not the easiest place to go. Um, how would you assess that that first team performance uh, on that uh, on that visit to Leicester, which was, oh, as you say, a few weeks ago now? Yeah, I mean. To be honest, I don't think it was that great for us. I think the I think most of the boys uh, sort of felt 
after after the meeting we can do better. Um, we had a couple of boys which was going fairly well, and Vadim had a good meeting. Uh, he is normally not. Uh, he didn't have so much success on the track there in the past, um, but he did really good. But but um, I think that uh, as a team, we could have done better, but it was still quite close in the end. Um, but of course, it was also the first meeting for, for Leicester as well. And um, and they probably had a similar feeling. Some of their boys, they were underperforming and, um, and uh, yeah, still early days. So um, so uh, it would be nice just to get some, some meetings in uh, every week and uh, and sort of managed uh, like try and, and build up the form and, and build some momentum to uh, to to race by five points in it though the aggregate bonus points are, are going to be really crucial so you you know it's it's certainly not out of sight from that point of view when you do face the lions at the adrian flux arena uh, in the in the coming weeks no for sure i mean we need to we need to perform good at home uh, you know we meet, need to make sure that we are we are dialed in properly and and at least win the home meetings, and uh, I also think that uh, that five points uh, is definitely manageable at home uh, to win by by more than five points. So, so that's uh, that's obviously uh, that's obviously the aim. Um, but now we have to face Bellevue first of all, and uh, and get off to a good start. Looking at the team, we mentioned about there being um, you know consistency with with Peterborough, but also a strong Danish presence in the Kingsland Stars lineup as well. With obviously yourself, Ben Basso, Michael Palm Toft. So um, from that point of view, you know there's, there's a, a good uh, sort of home feeling perhaps uh, among those riders, and, and obviously no communication issues at all. No, I don't think communication is never really an issue. You know, most of us uh, we speak English in the pits to uh, so everybody understands and uh, and which is how it should be. Um, but again, uh, we had quite a few of the same boys in the in the Peterborough side last year, and uh, you know, it, it, the season didn't start well last year. But um, but for sure, uh, sort of midway through or like after the summer, then then the form started to pick up. Uh, everybody was starting to go better. Uh, we had some some changes in the team which uh, which improved the performance. So so yeah, there's a few of the same boys uh, this year. But again, yeah, no, we we know I know the other riders as well from from yeah different teams and different races and and everything. So uh, so yeah, we just want to get going and uh, and show what we can do. And also familiarity with Rob Lyon, of course, who moves over as, as team manager. Of course, he's been with the Kingsland Stars before, moves back there. Um, and, you know, a, a title winner in, in recent years as well. So, uh, again, another part of the team that uh, that you're all familiar with. Yeah, Rob, he's been in the sport for, for many years. I've been riding uh, with him as team manager for, for several seasons before at, at Kingsland and uh, and yeah, I know him very well. So, um, so he definitely know what uh, what he has to do and and how to set the team up and 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 try and, and make sure that everything around us is uh, how it should be, so we can perform on the track. So, um, so again, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, as I see it, uh, a good step uh, for Kings Glen to to have to have Rob uh, leading the team. Eventually, hopefully, it will stop raining uh, in Europe and uh, particularly in the UK as well, and we'll get some meetings on. But looking at the, the the Premiership overall, the standard of teams is is much higher than than it has been for for many years. And I think mm-hmm. uh, every team has got uh, a Grand Prix rider or a, or a very you know recent uh, Grand Prix rider uh, amongst their ranks. So. You know, you are facing some tough opposition, but that that must be exciting for you to to you know to race against. You know, I know you do it in Poland week in week out, but to, to do it in Britain, um, you know, it must be a nice refreshing change. It is. It's, it's good to see that uh, that the league's getting stronger in England, uh, and it's good to see some of the what can you say old faces or definitely riders which has been racing in England in the past uh, has come back and and and. You know, I think it's just good for the sport. But again, it's also uh, it's going to be more tough on the tracks. It's going to be more competitive and uh, competitive. Uh, sorry, um, and uh, yeah, can't really uh, can't take anything for granted. You know, when you when you roll up to the tape, you know you're going to have your work cut out, and uh, makes us work harder as well. So I think it's good. 
We had a conversation at the at the British Speedia, uh, British Speedway Media Day um, about when, whenever you, when we look at the top riders, you know these top riders they may well fall out of the Grand Prix for a bit, but quite often they come back or they're certainly threatening there or thereabouts. And mm-hmm. and, and and you explained it really well actually uh, the difference between you know a good rider say a good a good sort of league rider and a world class rider you know we're talking to people like you know Woofy or now Buley Yanovsky yourself you've been right to the top second in the world you know to me i think that's pretty much the top isn't it um yeah. you know you've you know, but what separates you from a from a good regular rider i think consistency um and I'm not talking about consistency uh, in terms of um, being in top of the Grand Prix year in and year out, but you need to you need to be consistent in in your preparation and in your attitude towards the sport, and and just to make sure that you do everything that you can all the time and not get carried away when you have a bit of success, because then it's easily gone again. Uh, so I think I think consistency is uh, is everything. Um, as well as on the track, and you know, you you may, many times you see the the, the top riders as as you describe them. Uh, they always perform pretty good in the leagues. They're always down about a number one spot, and um, and yeah, they just know how to um, how to approach the sport. And um, I think that's uh, that is the difference. And I think as well, another thing that came out from asking that similar question to other riders, and I think I asked it to to Woofy, Yanovsky, Greg Hancock, and and they all touched on as well, you know, the mental aspect too of of having that mental strength and perhaps that difference of of knowing that when you pull up to the tapes that you're probably going to beat the people next to you, even mm-hmm. if they don't realise it yet. You know that it's not so much how you ride the bike or how fast you ride the bike, but knowing up here that you can do it that and that strength and when you're under pressure as well you might have lost your first two races or come third or come fourth in the first two races but then pulling up to the tapes as we've seen you know with the likes of Schmarschlick and so on so you know repeatedly over time they get to the tapes they've had a bad start but then still they're standing on top of the podium at the end of the meeting yeah and that is that is obviously mental toughness and and it's confidence um it's it's a matter of but it's a thing you, it's something you build up I mean, for me personally, it, it is something that I build up. If I'm on, if I have a momentum going, if I perform solid pretty much everywhere, then um, then it's it's more difficult to beat me. Also, psychological because I feel I have a feeling when I go to the tapes and I when I go to the meetings that you know it's only a matter of who's gonna beat me a few times. You know, if how many points I'm gonna drop, uh, and I know on good on good days that I'm not I'm not going to drop a lot of points it's, it's sort of like something that you feel inside you and and of course it's never a guarantee that everything is going to go well that's not what I'm saying and it's it shouldn't be you shouldn't be overconfident let's, let's let's say like that but but again you need to believe yourself and you need to uh, to sort of manage to keep that uh, that feeling inside you but um, but it is uh, it is a momentum, and uh, it is something that uh, that you build up over time. It's not something that just comes from one day to another. I think it's an interesting way of looking at it because I think you know, obviously, a lot of people would think, "How many points am I going to score today?" But for you, you're looking about how many am I going to drop? You know, I'm going to win them all, but maybe I might, I might, I might drop a few. So it's just limiting how many you lose rather than how many you are going to score. Yeah, yeah, but again, you know, I mean, if if you did, if you if you're not confident, if you have a if you have a tough time and things is not working out for you, then uh, then it's also it also goes the other way. It's 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 tough even before you get to the meetings because you you overthink things and and you sort of don't have that positive uh, what do you say energy and that 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 confidence and believe in in, in everything that is going to be good uh, that you would when when things are on the roll. So uh, so it can be both things you know both scenarios but uh but yeah you need to uh you need to be strong mentally to to be able to uh be a high performer over over many years then uh, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of determination and and and, and definitely a lot of consistency consistency in uh, in how you how you approach and i co- i guess as well the consistency in the mechanical side too, I guess, and in, in who tunes your engines and who's, uh, you know, putting the bikes together. That that obviously you're only as good as what you're on. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it is everything. It is you. You need to have that uh, that resilience that when things is not going good, that you can still manage to pull something through, and you still have the that uh, fire to to keep working, uh, even things is not going well, and um, it, it, that's that comes to your own physique. It comes to down to how you prepare your equipment, how how much time you spend on testing things uh, and and just prepare everything and i think everything is one package when it comes to uh, to being a, a really good rider i mean a lot of boys can go to a certain level from from talent and just to because they're good on a bike but not really take mm. too much else into consideration uh, whereas if you really want to be a top top rider then uh, you need to have the full package and uh, otherwise you're not going to get there I'm, maybe you can get there, but you won't stay there. I did a, I had a conversation with, with Rory Schlein um, on another show that we're doing, and uh, we were talking about Kings Lynn, and he was talking about you. Of course, he's ridden with you um, over the years, and, and he said that you are the fastest rider he's ever ridden with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, he can never keep up with you. You're just out and out speed. So you must be doing something right on that, on that front. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I definitely did have quite a, a lot of years when when I was fast. I know I was fast, uh, but that's what I was also down to equipment suiting me really good, uh, confidence, everything was going well. Um, I took in a few knocks and stuff, and I felt like I, it set me back uh, on many on many levels, uh, especially when it comes to just my overall performance. So, um, so yeah. I know what I can do when when things are going well. So obviously, this, uh, that's also what I'm what I'm looking to to achieve also this season. And in, you are um, now with with sort of the next generation of, of, of Danish talent, I suppose, in the, the likes of Benjamin Basso. There's a, a good production line coming through once again in, in Danish speedway. Jonas Knudsen, perhaps a, another example. There there are many others, but it, it's uh, it seems to be a good time and. Denmark doing well on the world scene at the moment, but you fancy maybe better days are are, are around the corner again. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, we have uh, we have quite a few uh, young talents coming through. Uh, like you said, Benjamin is uh, is doing well. He's improving all the time. Same as uh, as many of the other young boys. Uh, we had new boys in the Grand Prix. Uh, not like not not this year, but. I mean, if you look a couple of years back with uh, with Anders Thompson coming in, Michael Mickelson coming in, and and um, and doing fairly decent uh, on the big scene, so so yeah, um, I think that uh, that talents are coming through all the time. Um, it's just a matter about who uh, who has that extra to go the last bit, and and who's who's strong enough to actually stay there, um, because that's that's a different matter. Um, because talent comes and goes, and um, the the art is to to stay for a long time. So um, so yeah. And it's the Speedway of Nations, of course, in in the UK later this year. I'm not sure if you're going to be you'll be involved in that in any capacity, but um, that's at the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. But uh, obviously, everybody starts with the scores all level there. We've seen surprises before with Poland getting in a bit of a pickle in that final bend and uh, and, and, and and you know gifting it to, to Great Britain from that moment. With one that I don't think uh, Magic Janowski is going to live down for uh, for a little while. <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know it's a you know big major event back in Britain there in. Manchester and that will be in July yeah that's going to be uh, a massive event again uh, uh, I don't think I would be be in the lineup for Denmark I haven't been I haven't really done anything to to be in the lineup let's say like that so uh, we have some strong boys uh, which are which are ready to do it and and also um, they need to build for the future as well you know they, they can't keep running running the old boys all the time uh you know, but uh, but they have a good new setup with the, with Team Denmark. Nikki's in charge now. He have this uh, this squad of riders there, which is uh, sort of there and about the Grand Prix, and um, and I think the, what they're doing is is looking quite good. You know, they have been uh, improving for since Nikki came there in charge, and um, and I think uh, you know if everybody uh, of the Danish boys is performing well on the on the day, then I think we also in for a shot. So um, I definitely hope that. Um, that we we're gonna reach some success with Denmark, but again, it's uh, it's completely open. It's uh, it's a really good track to to have the event on, and um, 
and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of the biggest in the calendar. Yeah, looking forward to seeing it. Well, look, um, all the best, Niels, when you do get on track. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be this Thursday. Uh, Thank you. Kings Lynn. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I think everybody does. Everybody does. Yeah. Um, but uh, surely things will improve at some point soon. And uh, look forward to seeing you in action. And um, all the best for the season for yourself and Kings Lynn. Thanks for that. Niels Christian Everson. And you can see him in action for the Kings Lynn Stars this coming Thursday at the time of releasing this. And uh, wherever the Kingsland Stars will, of course, be riding, he's also in action in Poland for Gdansk as well, when they eventually get on as well. So these uh, wet conditions affecting everybody across Europe at the moment, uh, not just in the UK. In the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, a little bit of reaction from uh, around about the Cab Direct Championship. We'll hear again from Stuart Dixon, because uh, his side, the Berwick Bandits, not only have they won their first bit of silverware, but uh, also they got a big win on the board in the BSN series, taking on the reigning league champions, the Glasgow Tigers. And uh, we'll hear from Stuart Dixon on uh, his early assessment of Berwick's chances in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. And we will hear from a Glasgow Tiger as well in the form of Steve Worrell, who meets... Mike this week uh, Mike Boswell uh, our regular reporter he's, uh, he's interrogated a number of riders and the next one to step up to the plate is Steve Worrell who gives uh, quite in-depth answers as well that's on the way in the next part of No Breaks No Fear No Breaks No Fear the official British Speedway podcast a little bit of a roundup from the Cab Direct Championship in this part of No Breaks, No Fear. And we'll start in the far northeast corner of England. And the Berwick Bandits finally ended their Glasgow hoodoo with a 48 42 win over the Glasgow Tigers in the BSN series opener on Saturday. The Bandits had lost their last 13 matches against Glasgow, uh, but held on for victory in an exciting Shield Field Park clash, which went right down to a last heat decider. A tactical substitute win for Chris Harris in the penultimate race helped reduce the gap to four points, but Berwick number one Louis Kerr got the better of Chris Harris for the third time in the meeting in Heat 15. Rory Schlein adding third place ahead of Leon Flint. And uh, Louis Kerr scored 13 plus one for the Bandits, dropping his only point to Leon Flint in Heat 10. Chris Harris racked up 15 from six rides for the Tigers, who were a six-rider outfit after reserve Lee Complin provided a non-negative result to an anti-doping test. And uh, there'll be more on that uh, in the coming days as uh, there's more information around that situation. Um, right now, though, let's hear it from Stuart Dixon, team manager of the Berwick Bandits. And uh, you might say it's been a long time coming for Berwick to get one over the old enemy Glasgow Tigers. And finally, they achieved it in 2024. Well, Stuart, Saturday night, um, a terrific performance from Berwick. And I, I know it's uh, something that you like to keep track of, whichever club you're in charge of. But also to end, end that hoodoo against Glasgow for Berwick as well, that, that was really pleasing for the club. It was. That, that was obviously the topic of conversation up to the, the start of the meeting on Saturday night that Berwick has not managed to beat Glasgow on the last 13 occasions. Obviously, there, some new riders in weren't part of that sort of scenario, or myself, but the bottom line was, was really to win the meeting and that would that would knock the hoodoo at the same time. We'd done that. For me, Berwick fully deserved their win. 48-42 um, and the scoreline never flattered us in any way. It was a good convincing win, yeah. When you look through the, the score charts as well, it, it was great that everyone played their part, everyone contributed a, at least a paid win for, for all seven of the boys. Very important. I know one or two of the boys were slightly disappointed with their performance, but you know, as a seven man team, as, as everybody knows, and you know, you look at our scores, Louis Kerr obviously you can see top man, but it's solid. The next six riders are very, very solid with the scoring. I'm sure Rory will improve his score a little bit, as one or two others will. But um, Overall, as long as we can get that magic 46 points in all the home meetings this year, I'll keep the Berwick fans happy, which is the job I've been brought in to do. Very early doors, but in, in, enough encouraging signs so far? Definitely, yes, I think there is. Um, Glasgow was, was a big test. I know there'll be others uh, without naming names. The clubs, the riders and the supporters will know the clubs I'm talking about. There's going to be bigger challenges, but we have another one this Saturday against Edinburgh. If we can get a victory against them... That will give us two home wins in the BSN trophy and then it's up to us to try and steal something on our way trip. 
There's no disrespect to, to the Berwick Bandits of, of years gone by, but with bringing yourself in as, as team manager this year with some of the signings that have been made over the winter, is it almost as if the, there's a, a shift of mentality at, at the Bandits this year, perhaps? I, I would think so. I, obviously, I wasn't there before, so it's hard to judge, but when you do bring in new faces, th- th- there is a freshness about it, and th- there are no, they're no you know, still kind of worrying about things for the se- season before because they weren't here, same as myself. I think, without being disrespectful, the only way was up. I mean, and we've done that. But as I said, as you rightly said, and I'll rightly say again, it's early doors yet. Very, very early, but very good start, yeah. Yeah, the, the Courtney's obviously put so much time, effort and dedication in up there as well. And there's um, a picture being doing the rounds on social media of Louis Kerr congratulating the, the track staff after that Heat 15 as well. Um, the Courtney's have put stuff out on their social media as well, saying that's what it meant because so much work has been put in into that venue, particularly that racetrack. Yeah, it did. The boy Kerr, the, the gentleman, uh, he was cuddling with uh, obviously Razor, who does the track, Ian Ray at Berwick. He was, was underwater on Thursday night, Friday morning. He'd done a great job to get into shape. I think that was a thank you for that because Louis really did revel in those conditions on Saturday night. But as you say about the Courtney's, they worked tirelessly behind the scenes. They brought me in to do the managerial side. They could concentrate on other stuff. And so far, it's been the, the perfect sort of partnership almost. Uh, but we just, as I say, we just need to keep it going as long as we possibly can because they're a really good buzz. The pits were bouncing on Saturday night, we'd expect, and so was the main stand when we come round in the, the parade truck, the back straight, the third bend people. You're some really passionate fans at Berwick, and uh, we, we want to give them something to shout about, that's for sure, and so far we're doing, we're doing the job of us, yeah. Elsewhere in the Cab Direct Championship and in the BSN series, uh, Jake Allen and Nathan Ablett took the honours as Scunthorpe Scorpions opened their season with a 52-38 win over Red Car Bears. It was the Aussie star Jake Allen who top scored for the Scorpions with 13 plus 1 bonus, dropping his only point of the meeting to the Bears' Charles Wright in the final race, whilst reserve Ablett was very impressive with 12 from 5 rides. The Scorpions won the meeting despite losing Michael Palmtoft due to an early spill when he looped out of the gate. His finger slipped off the clutch in Heat 3, uh, whilst uh, Wright was fortunate to escape injury when he collected the fallen Kyle Howarth in Heat 13 before resuming to total 16 points. I'll hear from a couple of those involved. In a moment, we'll hear from uh, the Red Car Bears team manager, Gavin Parr. First of all, captain of the Scunthorpe Scorpions, Simon Lambert. Quite a healthy lead to take into the uh, the second leg of this tie now. Yeah, for sure, you know. Um, all a little bit race rusty. Uh, not really a normal scunny track with a few bumps and holes, which you don't normally get here, but still a good meeting and exciting and some good racing, so... Yeah, as long as everyone enjoyed it, you know, luckily everyone's gone home safe and sound and uh, I think, you know, from a, from a team's point of view, it's a good, uh, very, very good opening meeting and uh, room for improvement and with, the, with the, um, the win victory we got, you know, a bit more improvement like we, we've got in a tank, you know, it would be more, so positives. <laughs> There was a lot of chat, chat about the track beforehand. A lot of extra work was, was required to, to get it on. Um, just tell us about the conversations that are going on there. And we saw you talking to the tractor driver and, and whatever to, to get it on. And we saw that actually, as the meeting went on, that inside line where the, the concern was actually opened up. Often the case, you know. Uh, listen, you know, first meeting of the season, we're all a bit rusty. Whether it's first meeting or last meeting, we all want to go home safe. But um, very soft going in turn one. Um, Everyone was happy for Rob to do the work. He just bladed it off, just you know, rip, ripped the grip out basically, and took it to the base. Um, but he did, he did produce a bit, you know. So, you know, like I say, this isn't a normal track. We've, he's had a few stock car meetings, and it's had a lot of hammer. You know, look at the weather. You know, raining again now. It's it's been the worst winter ever, really, hasn't it? You know, so. The tractor took hammer, um, but again, it is what it is. Fair play to Rob and all his team. Um, a big thank you and well done to the fans as well for you know persevering and waiting. And uh, the show went on, and um, yeah, you know credit where credit's due. You know, well done to all the riders. We all, we were all keen to go, and we all wanted to race. Um, you know, they did a great job last week, but certain others didn't want to didn't want to ride. So it is what it is. And perhaps the, the star man of the night, certainly Rory Schlein's star man on commentary this evening was Nathan Ablett, who had a terrific evening at reserve. Yeah, fantastic, you know, but that's why he's back this year, you know. He showed signs every week of improvement last year. 
made a few silly mistakes, but you know he's a young lad, he's learning, and uh, you know we, he was signed to potentially be one of the best, if not the best reserve in the league. And um, well, I think you know he, he set the bar quite high for himself. So um, so yeah, great. You know, like I say, one to seven, very good, very pleased, and uh, also a special mention David Ayer. You know, after uh, last week's palaver and this week's. Struggle with the with the track conditions and then Tufty getting injured. IRR. He's had a proper baptism of fire, but uh, he's handled it well. He's been brilliant, you know. And um, he, he's he's like the calm in the team. So yeah, uh, on a whole, we we all believe we can go places this year. Awesome, great job tonight, Simon. No worries, mate. Thank you. Despite tricky conditions, there was some very good racing throughout the course of the meeting, but uh, it was a tough night at the office for the Red Car Bears. Here's the Bears team manager, Gavin Parr. Yeah, we, we, we held on, didn't we? We sort of dug in, um, you know, but it was very difficult from the start. Um, no, you know, I think Scunthorpe, our riders, um, the conditions weren't ideal, but, you know, the weather that we've had certainly doesn't help. Um, you know, I feel for Rob, I, I feel for anybody who's trying to prepare tracks at this time of year. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't ideal, we, we all, all seven of our riders wanted to race, um, it just needed a little bit of remedial works to start with, which I think we got done um, to a sort of satisfactory level. Um, but from then on, yeah, they, take nothing away from Scunthorpe, they're great at their own track anyway, um, and we just found it a little bit difficult. What would be the areas, you know, this is the first time you've seen your team in action together as a 1-7, to seven. are there any areas that you're looking to maybe tweak for the next fixture? I don't think for the next fixture, but I, I think I think I've got to look, um, today I thought Jason rode fantastic at number two, um, and it might be a case of Jason, Connor and Jonas might swap places for a, a, few, a few matches until we find the balance that works correctly. But um, I'm not going to sort of, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do, do massive changes just because of what happened here tonight. Um, let, let's see what happens in the next sort of two or three, certainly the BSN series, let's say. And you've got a fixture coming up at home fairly soon, all being well, weather permitting. Hopefully the weather the next week's uh, going to be pretty good, fingers crossed. But you're racing uh, at home and it'll be against Workington, so you're surely looking to get your season started in your BSN series at home, which is where really the focus has, has got to be, everybody to try and win their home fixtures. Yeah, without doubt. Um, you know, I, I think the, the guys, um, they're wounded tonight, you know, they're, they're not happy, and I'm not happy. Um, at the end of the day, we want to win every fixture. We know coming to Scunthorpe's always hard, but uh, yeah, we'll certainly be looking to bounce back and bounce back in style at home against the working side, where sort of four or so of them won't have ever rode the track. So uh, yeah, as I say, I'm not going to sort of do too much after tonight's performance. Um, um, but there might be little tweaks that need to be made. Um, we'll see how it goes after this. And top scorer by quite some distance was Charles Wright, who once again showed his uh, his class in in all conditions. Yeah, Charles is just brilliant. At the end of the day, you know, he's had a fantastic start with Oxford, um, and I think to be fair, you, you always think of Charles riding the dirt and loving the dirt. But Oxford's quite slick. Um, I think he went to Birmingham, which was quite slick, and he's come here tonight and showed that you know what it is. It doesn't matter what he rides on. Uh, Charles will always he'll always give you a hundred percent. Um, and yeah, he top scored by a mile. Awesome, like, well, we'll see you again soon. You're on BSN again very soon uh, next Friday, so uh, we'll see you back at uh, the Echo Arena. Let's hope I'm smiling a little bit more, Ian. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see the uh, Red Car Bears versus Workington Comets on BSN on Friday. We'll run through all the fixtures before we finish off. Uh, before we do that, though, let's have another episode of Mike Meets. Mike Boswell, our intrepid reporter, we challenged him at the uh, British Speedway Row Motor Oil Premiership Media Day to, uh, to try and lure as many riders over to him as he could through the course of the day. And he, he had a very good success rate. And, and, in fact, some riders speaking to Mike who... Well, you very rarely hear interviewed anywhere else, to be honest. But uh, Steve Worrell was one of the riders who spent quite a bit of time chatting with Mike. I think he enjoyed himself. And uh, right now, you're going to get to know Steve Worrell a bit better, of course, of the Birmingham Brummies and the Glasgow Tigers as well in 2024. Mike Boswell meets Steve Worrell. Name? Stephen Worrell. Uh, occupation? Uh, professional speedway rider. First time on a speedway bike. I think it would have been, I did a, a like a slide day at Scunthorpe on a little track, mm -hmm. on like a little 150 type thing, and um, it just went from there. Was it something that you asked to go and do, or was it something that your parents go, oh, he'll like to go and do that? It was strange how it came around, because from 
um, basically walking we rode motocross bikes um, I had an accident where kind of turned me pushed me away from motorsport in general yeah um, and it we'd done it for from three years old till I'd say 13 you know it's a long time mm. that we'd built up a you know the skills to be able to ride bikes and um, we always watched Speedway on TV yeah and it was just randomly we was watching it one night and my dad thought why don't we have a go and yeah, it went from there. It's, um, it always seems to be the dad, dads. I have a little boy, and, and he's he's shown interest in motor, in motorsport. I was like, yeah, you can have a go. And now the dad, as the dad, I'm going, don't push him too much, don't push him too much. He's got to go and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly that feeling, because obviously doing it myself now, um, you know, my lad has a bike, um, mm-hmm. he's, he's nine. Um, he's probably been on it. I don't know, 10 times yeah. maximum because I just, I don't enjoy watching him. I don't know it's selfish, um, but you've, to be able to fully invest in it, you've both got to be, you know, excited and and into it and I'm not, just not into watching him do it because maybe I, maybe my thought process will change over time, but um, I know the dangers and maybe mm-hmm. I've been through more than others with injuries and all that, which puts me off because I don't want to, yeah, I couldn't. I don't think I could watch my son go through it. So, puts me off. And so, he's into football. So we go football in sun- Saturdays and Sundays now, which is nicer. <laughs> You're a little bit like more more relaxed. And he sounds sounds. I get relaxed with it, but like my my wife, I don't know what to say. My wife is the person who is on the sidelines going, "Go faster, go faster." I yeah. never thought she would be the competitive type of person. So, yeah, I know the feeling because. We're the same, you know, she'll be pushing me to take him on it and I don't enjoy it, so I yeah. kind of, like, come up with every excuse of why we don't want to go that day, so... Oh, it makes, it makes sense. I totally, totally, totally connect with that. Um, people who've helped you, then, in your Speedway, speedway career? There's a, a lot of people. Um, I'd say the early days, obviously, I wouldn't be doing it at all without my parents, you mm. know, like, they funded the whole thing from... I'd say up, right up until what, maybe six years ago. You know, like the the first five six years yeah. of of Speedway was completely funded by my parents. So, mm-hmm. and then obviously as you start getting more professional and um, you know you've got to start standing on your own two feet, then you start looking for sponsors. And uh, I've had sponsors who've been with me for a very long time, like CFS. You know, they've been yeah. they've been with me now for I think maybe six years and um, you know people like that are, they're just so hard to come by and you know can't thank them enough really for what they do for me every single year mm-hmm. now I know um, sponsors are super important in any sort any sort of sport full, full stop yeah because you you need the it's not so much the financial investment but it, it's just the the backing of somebody you know to just to help and take the load off with things and you know they're, they're absolutely fantastic um you know they don't ask a lot of me either, which yeah. sometimes it's hard when you're trying to. You know, you, we're like we're like bloody circus acts. You know, we're trying to juggle so many things, and when you're trying to do it all on your own, and during the season it's so busy like, here, there, and everywhere, and there's too many things to juggle. And you know, the, the way our relationship is with them, it's fantastic. And it's not only them. There's a lot of people. You know, back in my Bellevue days, I did seven years here, and. I had Ian Sinderson with ATPI, you know, Mark Lemon, mm-hmm. um, the, the manager and the director of Speedway here at the National State Speedway Stadium. You know, he was a big part of it all from from the all the way, all the way through my Bellevue days. Um, I've probably missed out people, but you know, there's, there's so many. You know, it's hard to it's hard to put them all down in a, yeah, in a sentence. I, I can, I as I say, totally understand where you're coming from, and with the sponsors being important. I mean, if, if anything. Yeah, I know we've just we're asking questions here, but sort of just that reflection on the sponsors. Is it is it the belief also and the confidence that when they invest in you, it, it helps or? In a way, yeah. There's more of a purpose, you know. You you've got people backing you. You've, you've got people who, um, you know, they they believe in you almost. Otherwise, they wouldn't be helping you. Yeah. And it, and it does does spur you on, you know. Like there's there's a lot to be said for sponsorship other than just the financial help or the, the help with products you know it's mm. the belief and the backing that you know someone wants to be associated with you okay so we talked about people who've helped you in your speedway career um best things about speedway it's the lifestyle you know um 
like we get to do days like this, you know, like I, I could be doing a nine to five somewhere now and yeah, just go home and same thing every day. But we we do get to live a very good life, and sometimes you do take it for granted. We have to, uh, I guess, just stop and look around and take in what we what we do and what we where we get to go and what we get to see and you know it is um you know I can't think of what the word is but it is like a, a privilege you know to be able to do what we do and like you mentioned it to people outside of Speedway um just in general at on the school run or whatever and um you know they say oh wow you know what an amazing job that is and yeah we, we do take it for granted so um no it's like yeah, it's. Yeah, there's not, there's not many. There's no other job like it, and and I and I do appreciate what I do, and I know it won't last forever, and I can, you know, when the time comes, I can hang my boots up, mm-hmm. as the court goes, and um, go and live that normal life of you know going to work and doing whatever. But in the moment now, I've got to make sure I enjoy it all and take if, it in. If summer, it's a bit like, I don't know, taking some, taking in his 20s, maybe going travelling, experiencing all different different things that are thrown at you and then going and reflecting back on it. That's it. You know, like, I can I can stop and go and get a job any day I want, you know, like, and I can go and live that lifestyle, but I can't do this forever. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's... Um, got to make sure I keep thinking back to that, you know, when the... When it's tough, which it is, you know, like when Speedway is good, it's good. When it's bad, it's yeah. terrible because you, you do so much work, you know, put so much into it, you know, emotionally, physically, financially, to turn up and <clears throat> like not score, not score what you're capable of, or go through a bad patch, or you know, go through injury. You do have to just step back and remember that, you know, like the, the good times are good, yeah. and you know, make sure you make the most of them. So. How would people around you describe describe Steve Wall? Hopefully, as a good guy, you know, like um, genuine. I guess um, you know, I'd help anyone. You know, yeah. anyone needs help. I, I'm always the first person there. Um, always willing to, you know, do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like a, it, it's quite an honour that the last few teams that I've represented over the. I'd say the last five years that I've been captain, um, apart from my time at Wolverhampton, which was with Sam. Um, Sam has been a, the long-standing captain there, but and I think it says a lot. You know, there's not a lot of people who have the characteristics to be a captain and to or or want to be in that role. You know, like um, but yeah, I've you know the for what one reason or another, the teams have always that I've been a part of have selected me to be captain and. I guess it's because I have them characteristics, yes, you know, I'm open, yeah. I'm willing yeah. to help, I'm approachable, you know, I'm, I guess, hopefully nice, well-spoken and, you know, all, all them things that yeah, tick the boxes. Yeah, in absolutely, the, in the, yeah. absolutely, there's always a lot of tick boxing going on and, and um, sort of, you know, if you could tick a box for someone to watch for the future, is there anyone that you've got your eye on or even you're helping at, at any point in time? Uh I don't know, it's difficult because there's so many young kids coming through, but the the issue is if you're not in the team with them, you get a real different mm. view or a perspective of who they are and what they do. And and then, the, the, like I, I've experienced it before, you know, there'll be a certain rider who you've never been in a team in, or involved in a team with them and your opinion of them is different. Is, you know, it, you might have yeah, a different you, opinion it's, of them it's because outside in. Yeah, because every everyone has, everyone treats racing differently. You know, you you turn up and it's not a normal life. It's everyone, or some people can be a completely different person as soon as they get to track. And once the racing's yeah. finished, this the flitch, the, the switch flicks, and they become that normal person again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. it, unless you're in the circle and you know them and you spend time with them, you only see that. You know that it might be. I don't know, like Nicky Pedersen as an example. You know, I imagine he's two completely different people. So on track, he's uh, ruthless. You know, he's Super he's fo- Nicky Pedersen. Focused, yeah, yeah, really he has focused. tunnel vision on yeah. just being successful and winning. And then off the track, he's the nicest guy. Yeah. So if unless you're involved with him and understand him and spend time with him, you would never meet that other person. Mm-hmm. So. Like I've had it a lot of times in different teams where you know, there'll be sign a certain rider, for instance, and you, you think, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. And then you, you spend time with them, you learn about them, and you, 
you, you know, you get a completely different perspective. And so there is like a lot of young British lads who I haven't had a chance to spend time with to be able to read and understand. And because you know, I've been around a while, I've, and and I've you know started at the bottom, struggled on my own, yeah, and trying yeah. to trying to work it all out to to get where I am now. So I feel like I, I have got a lot of experience in understanding from starting out. And you see it now where like. All the mistakes that we made with, you know, not having a clue about how to work with the bikes and all that lot, and you see it now with these younger kids. But there's obviously there's people who I have spent time with, like the I know they're not English, but the cooks, you know, Ben and Zach yes, Cook. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, prime example for Ben, you know, he turned up here in the Peter Craven, and you know, he could, he could have won it, you know, yeah, like it. Yeah, superb form. It's. Uh, but you, you see their attitudes and all that lot, you know, and I think that they've got a long way to go, you know, and they, they, they can go a long way in British Speedway and in World Speedway. So going back in time and history, we'll talk about iPods. What would you have on your iPod? Or what was the last kind of thing that you listened to? Um, put into, I guess, if, if I was just cruising down the road and wanted something easy to... I, I like country music. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know, it's not head banging. It's you know, it's just nice and easy to listen to. And so, if I was going to fill it up with um, with some songs, it'd be probably country music. Yeah, fair, fair enough. And the country in the UK is certainly making a yeah, big, it's just, big comeback. It. It's 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 definitely a popular genre now. Um, career post Speedway. So, if you could do any job in the world, what would what would Steve Royal like to do? Uh, be a, I don't know, a professional footballer or something like that. They have a good lifestyle, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they have a bit of a longer yeah, it's, lifestyle. It's similar, it's competitive, you know, they're they're active all the time. They're you know, they get paid a fortune for doing what they do, so mm. they can do you know, nice houses, nice cars, live a nice lifestyle, that'd suit me, yeah. Cool. Last film kinda of watched? Or last, 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 last into, thing you binge watched. I'm enjoying it? a series on Netflix, uh, I think The Gentleman. So I'm watching that. So I'll um I've got a train to Glasgow on tomorrow for six hours, so hopefully I'll, um, I'll get it finished. <laughs> yeah, just just scroll, scroll yeah, yeah. And, and wait. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, uh, speed of a question related, you know, favourite tracks that you like going to? Favourite tracks, I think, obviously, UK spending board. yeah, spending so much time in pool, obviously, that become a, a real favourite of mine. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, ignore the National Speedway Stadium, obviously. I spent a long time here, and... And I learned to race the track really well, so obviously Bellevue's in that on that list as well. So I say pool and yeah, Bellevue, the Wolver- Wolverhampton. You know that yeah. was always a track that I seemed to ride well at. You know it was a it suited my style really well. Um, yeah, if I was going with the top three, it's them. It's done. Done. Cool. Final final question, then I'll let you get on with all the the other bits today. What do you do to switch off, relax, and wind down? Wind down. Uh, I'm lucky I've got my wife and my two children so when I get home from Speedway I can kind of you know I haven't got to sit there in my own thoughts you know like there's it's a busy lifestyle you know trying to look trying to run a family trying to run a family oh my goodness yes because you know every single night there's something going on whether it's singing gymnastics dancing football athletics swimming you know that so lifestyle at home is just as busy as Speedway so like when I get back it's it's easy for me to switch off because there's just so much going on so quick question so last last question have you got the dad's taxi sticker yet on on the no. back it, it feels it's, like that sometimes well, so. yeah it does yeah but well, I'm not I'm not there yet cool Steve well yeah. thank you very much for chat cool Cheers. thank you yeah, great chat there with Mike and Steve Worrell, who will be racing for the Birmingham Brummies and the Glasgow Tigers. Let's have a look at the upcoming fixtures across um, all of the leagues of British Speedway. And we'll start on Wednesday, BSN Series Southern Pool Pirates versus the Plymouth Gladiators. 7.30 the start time. That fixture will be live on BSN as well on Wednesday evening. Thursday, it's Row Motor Oil Premiership. It's Kingsland Stars versus Bellevue Aces. Leicester Lions versus as Sheffield Tigers and Oxford Spires versus the Ipswich Witches. Friday, another BSN uh, broadcast for you from the BSN series.
series in the northern section. It's Red Car Bears versus the Workington Comets. Also on Friday, Steve Worrell's Glasgow Tigers hosting the Edinburgh Monarchs in the Scottish section of the BSN series, whilst the Scunthorpe Scorpions race the Plymouth Gladiators in the Cab Direct Knockout Cup. That's the first round, first leg. On Saturday, local derby in the BSN series Scottish group, Berwick Bandits versus the Edinburgh Monarchs. And uh, also on uh, Saturday, uh, Plymouth Gladiators due to uh, race their first home fixture. And that's against the Scunthorpe Scorpions in the Cab Direct Knockout Cup first round second leg. So straight back the uh, for the second leg 24 hours later. Uh, nothing on Sunday. Then on Monday, back to Rome Motor Oil Premiership. Bellevue Aces versus the Kingsland Stars. Birmingham Brummies versus Leicester Lions. And that's it for the next week ahead keep you up to date and don't forget keep up to date with everything happening across British Speedway previews reviews reaction videos everything else you need on social media Facebook Twitter Instagram and of course on the official website britishspeedway.co.uk just beware of sites particularly Facebook pages that uh, send you a friend request looking like an official British Speedway page, and it's not. British Speedway is not sending any any friend requests to anyone. You like the official British Speedway page, and uh, you can see all the info there. So if anybody sends you a friend request or a group invite, chances are it's uh, some people who have, like, the scammers and, and so on, who are uh, setting up these... Uh, sites sort of impersonate British Speedway official accounts and then try and sell you live streams. If you want a live stream, always, please, always go to the BSN website, which is watch.britishspeedway.co.uk for BSN fixtures, or the official club websites of any club that streams their own as well. So uh, check those out. Go via the official websites and you'll be all right. If anybody's inviting you to uh, follow them to uh, give you links and uh, whatever for, uh, for live streams... Please be very wary and check them out. If in doubt, just go to the British Speedway uh, website and go to the official links from there. And uh, so that rounds things up for this week. Have a great week in Speedway. Fingers crossed for uh, better weather. And we'll see you next week on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.